Well, when it comes to the idea of an inverse function, we, we sort of kind of have a, a bit of a, an intuitive understanding of how they work. And uh, we're going to take just a very simple example here of an inverse function. And let's, let's, let's kind of start with that. So we're going to start with a very easy function. Uh, f of x is equal to x plus 5. Okay, just something very straightforward and simple. And we know that if we wanted to take f of 3, for example, we'd end up with 8. Okay, now if I wanted to do an inverse function, an inverse function, well then that's where I would have to sort of work backwards and come up with the original x value that I started with. So if I had this inverse function g of x... and I defined it to be the inverse of f, then I would have to say that g of 8 is equal to 3. Okay, well that sort of reverses the process. You can see that we're switching the domain and the range, sort of like what we've talked about with inverse functions already in this unit. And it's, it's easy to sort of mentally come up with the fact that g of x is going to be x minus 5. So you're sort of going in reverse here. All right, well, now derivatives of inverse functions uh, work pretty well, but they rely on this idea that if you do a function on a number and get a result, and then you do the inverse on that result, you should get the number you started with. So ultimately, the definition of an inverse function is this. f of g of x if f and g are inverses, should end up getting you plain old ordinary x, the original number that you started with. Okay, so we're going to let f be a function that's differentiable on some interval i, and f has an inverse function g. g is differentiable at any x for which f prime is not zero, and you'll see why that's the case in just a moment. And, and moreover, f of g of x is equal to x. Okay, so this is, this is kind of like a true mathematical definition of an inverse that we're dealing with right here. It's not any of this sort of, um, you know, flipping it over the y and y is equal to x on the graph or switching out the x and y. This is, this is a definition that's got a lot of real street cred to it, so to speak. So if I wanted to find the derivative of this inverse function, g of x, I certainly could. I'm going to use the chain rule to do it. So if I use the chain rule on the left side, I'm going to come up with f prime of g of x times g prime of x. That's the derivative of this inner function, of course, using the chain rule. And over here on the right side, I end up with 1. Now, the thing I'm interested in is the derivative of my inverse function. So what I need to do is just basically divide by this foolishness, and I'm going to end up with g prime of x being 1 over f prime of g of x. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the slopes of derivatives at corresponding points are just simply reciprocals of each other. And now that goes to really kind of drive home the point why the derivative of f should not be 0, uh, to help you understand that. Okay, this is a little bit of kind of a strange thing to work and process in your brain. Uh, so let's go through a couple of examples that you will see on uh, questions like this. Okay. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is correct a little bit of a, of a goof here that looks like the same question twice. So I'm going to cross this out and the thing that we're focused on is finding the derivative of the inverse. Okay, so the derivative of the inverse. Derivative of the inverse. All right, now let's, let's kind of pin down some things here uh, that are uh, kind of fascinating about this. Uh, this function, 1 fourth x cubed plus x minus 1, uh, we are going to have a bit of a challenging time finding the inverse of that function for several reasons. Uh, but one of them is the whole idea of switching out x and y and then trying to solve for y. It's just not going to be pretty. So in order to help this out a little bit, we're going to try to find the derivative only. And we don't need to actually find the inverse in order to come up with it. 
Okay, now the way this is phrased is a little strange, so bear with me here. This right here shouldn't really be um, shouldn't really be a, called x in my opinion. We should really call this f of x. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find the value of the derivative when f of x is equal to three. All right. Well, how do we go about doing that? Well, if f of x is equal to three then this thing right here, this gadget right here, this number three, this is part of the range of f, okay? Part of the range of f. All right, now I want you to stick that knowledge in your back pocket for just a second here. So I'm gonna call up that formula that we did just a moment ago, and the formula is gonna be one over f prime of g of x. Okay, So before we start in and try to do some funny things with this formula, I want to point out something important here. Um, when you do f prime of g of x, well here's the situation, you've got to do g of x first. Okay, Well g of x is the inverse of f. Okay g of x and f inverse are the same thing. So let's let's kind of make that note here for our notation. So f inverse of x is the same thing as g of x. Let's, let's kind of make that. So now that we've got that kind of cleared up, that f inverse is g, if I run this through g, now I'm going to get something that is in the domain of f. Oh, all right, so if the, what I get in here is in the domain of f, that domain is going to trickle through to the derivative, and then I can just go ahead and plug it in, which is nice. But I need to get that situation taken care of first. So what do I need to do first? First, what we must do is take our number and set it equal to our function. Okay. take our number and set it equal to our function. That's going to be the first step. So just kind of clearing the deck on that, that's what we need to do first. All right, now this, this is not going to be a very easy equation to solve because even if I take that 3 and move it over to the other side, it's still a cubic function and... I don't really think that it's going to play too nice algebraically to solve it out. So what do we do in a situation like this? Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to our calculators is what we're going to do. And I'm going to use the graphing feature of a calculator uh, to be able to come up with what the result is. And so you're going to graph this thing and basically look for where it intersects uh, the x-axis. So I'm going to take my graphing calculator here and type in 1 fourth x third plus x minus 4 and again put this into your graphing calc and look for zeros. Okay, so into your graphing calculator and you're going to look for zeros, and I'm going to push that button, and then as I look for zeros, I'm going to end up with x being 2. All right, so to kind of help out a little bit, basically what I'm dealing here is I'm dealing with the point 2 comma 3, which is on the graph of this function. Okay, so 2 comma 3 is on the graph. That's the ordered pair. All right, now for part two, and to finish the problem, you are going to take the x value you found in step number one, and you are going to put it into the formula. Okay, basically what I'm asking you to do at this point is find 1 over f prime of that x value, which is 2. 1 over f prime of 2. Okay, well, I'm 
pretty sure we could do this here with a little bit of work. Um, we just need to find what f prime of 2 is. So off to the side here, I'm going to find f prime of x, which is going to be 3 fourths x squared plus 1. Now if I put in 2, I'm going to get 3 fourths times 2 squared plus 1. All right, well, 2 squared is 4, and 4 and 4 cancel out, so and 3 plus 1, that's going to be 4. So the answer I'm going to get for my question finally is 1 over 4. 1 fourth is the slope of the derivative at that point. Okay, this seemed a little strange at first the way we said it, so let's kind of go through another example and see what we come up with here. All right, so here we go again, another chance to do this. Uh, find f inverse prime of a for the function f and the real given number a. Uh, a is 2. So once again, we're going to do our first step here. And our first step involves taking the 2 and setting it equal to x third plus 2x minus 1. Okay, so take this number, set it equal to your function, because we need to find out what the x value is for that particular function. And um, as you go to figure out uh, what that particular function is, we are going to need to uh, come up with what that is here. So I'm going to dump that into my graphing calculator and see what comes out. But before I do that, I should probably get this equal to 0. And that is going to help me to look for the zeros here. So I'm reaching for my calculator, and I'm getting all this typed in as we speak. And I go to solve this, and I'm going to get x is equal to 1. And again, what I did was graph this and look for zeros and that's the result that I ended up getting was x is equal to 1. Alright, so what do I need to find the derivative of the inverse? What I need is 1 over f prime of 1. That's what I need to do because I, ne I needed to work backwards. So the point 1 comma 2 is on the graph so now in this second stage of the problem, I just need to find 1 over f prime of 1. Okay, well, finding f prime shouldn't be too tough. f prime of x is going to be 3x squared plus 2. Sing along with me, you know the words. Uh, f prime of 1. Uh, f prime of 1 uh, should be, well, let's see, 3 times 1 squared plus 2. I hope that's 5. And as a result, our answer here is one-fifth. Okay, so a couple of examples on finding the derivative of an inverse function. Uh, the, the math behind it is a little complicated to try to process as to why we do things the way we do, but that's how we do them. There you go.